Hey everybody, it's your old friend Henry here from Mid Central Model Works. Welcome back to the channel. I uh, got something new that I'm going to be trying out. Um, it's a start to finish build. Um, I decided to choose uh, letting y'all share in on my senior group build. And my project is the Boot Hill Express with some modifications. So along the way, you're going to see exactly what I see. And there may be times where I miss a little bit. Um, so you'll just have to forgive me for that. Because sometimes when I'm sitting here at the desk, I may hit forget to hit record or whatever. Um, but it's something new that I'm trying out. Uh, so um, you're also going to see things sped up. Because... It, to sit here and watch this thing every single second would be an absolute bore. So I've decided to speed it up a little bit to to help you along the way to, to make it where, you, where it's more enjoyable. So let's get things turned around and we will watch this build. Okay, here we're fixing the, I'm showing you how to use the milliput. It's a putty that just, two parts, you mix it up, and it becomes hard as a rock, folks, if you've never used it. But yeah, once it's dry, that thing's hard as a rock. So here I'm going to be using an 80 grit sanding stick to take down some of this, get the highest spots. Yeah, there you go. You can see where I got put the 80 on there. And away we go. Sanding, 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 sanding. Yeah, if I had left this in real time, there would be a mountain of... Uh, footage here because it's just it you wouldn't believe how much footage goes into making one of these videos and then having to download everything okay yeah here we're going with uh what is it 180 yeah okay we done whipped out the 180 to smooth it down a little bit now i'm taking the knife and trimming along the edges getting rid of that uh, excess milliput And if you notice, I keep my brush handy right there to wipe away all the dust that accumulates. There you go. You got to pay attention to the details, folks. And Clean out your little nooks and crannies there. And you'll also notice I have to keep changing my glasses there because I am uh, a little hard of seeing up close, so I have to get the magnifiers out. I keep about three different brands of uh, magnifiers or different strengths. Like if I'm doing figure painting, I have to get up really close, so I use like a six or an eight times magnification. Here we go, we're going to do a little brush brush. I 
I try to keep my work area clean when when possible. Although sometimes when you see my desk, it, it will look like a train wreck, but it's organized chaos, trust me. There we're going back to back to clearing out some of the debris there. And we're changing up to a finer grit. Yeah, 320. There we go. Sometimes this camera doesn't want to focus for some reason, but keep my microfiber towel right there handy with me to help clean out the the sanding sticks all right and here we're going with the 400 so we went 80 grit 180 grit 320 now we're on to the 400 And now we're down to the 600 and we've got the, the Dawn dishwashing liquid in the and some water in a spray bottle and I'll give it some light wet sanding there to get rid of those deep scuff marks and here it looks like I'm just barely hitting it but trust me this it took a long time to do this. Like I said, if you were to watch it in real time, you would you would really get bored with watching me do all this stuff. Okay, now we're down to the 1000. You want this thing to be as smooth as possible. Okay, now we're down to the 7,000. And what I'm doing is I had filled in those uh, lantern holes where lanterns go. I decided not to use the lanterns on this build. I wanted that top to be completely smooth for the simple reason of the paint job that it's going to receive and the effects that it's going to display. I needed uh, as few as uh, a few hindrances as possible. All right, now we're getting out the uh, Duplicolor uh, grease and wax remover. This will take care of any fingerprints or smudges that might be on your fingers and time for some sticky tack and these are just craft sticks that I get from Walmart uh, you can get ones that look like popsicle sticks you can get some a little bit bigger and then these are the big ones I use a combination of all three no oh, that I think that's the middle mid-size one I'm sorry okay looking at it from here that's the mid-size okay yeah once I take my fingers away from it after I press it down I'll give it another good wipe down because I don't want any fingerprints on this when I prime it 
because trust me, it will fish out on you when you go to spray it. And here we are back from the paint booth. We're all primed and now this is not, it's still going to get a, a coat of sealer, a black sealer from, uh, from the paint job that I'm going to be doing on it. And here I'm just going to give it a light scuffing. It looks like I'm putting a lot of pressure on it, but I'm not. I'm just giving it a light scuff. Because the sealer that I'm going to put down on this thing, it needs uh, it, need, it needs a little bit of a, something to stick to. Yeah, more or less just brushing it. But looking at it like this, it looks like I'm putting a lot of pressure, but I, I'm not. And time to put away my, my stuff and time to get ready to fabricate the headliner for this thing. And I'm going to be using 10 thousandths plastic styrene. Because if you'll notice on the back side of that, of that roof, it's, it's pretty ugly. And if you look up inside the model once it's built, that's exactly what you'll see. So I decided, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a nice looking headliner up in this thing. One that hides those, those press marks. Here, I'm getting everything lined up. And I'm using like a super fine point uh, mechanical pencil because I want that I want the diameter of that lid to be as small as possible. And there we go. Now we just need to cut it out. Really what we're going to be doing here is just creating an illusion. That's why I went no thicker than ten thousandths. I could basically rip that in half if I needed to. But, uh, 
All I want to do is just... If somebody should look up in there, I want them to see something nice looking instead of just that ugly old roof line that the factory gives you. Here we're just feathering down the edges. It doesn't have to be a... That's probably a 400 or a 600 grit sanding stick right there. All I'm wanting to do is just kind of clean those edges up a little bit. No, that's a 1000. Okay, I'm sorry. I knew it was fine, but I wasn't sure. Okay, here I'm marking my front and my back, or top and, I mean, my top and bottom, I'm sorry. Top and bottom and then left and right. Because you see how ugly that that in, inside top is? There we go. Now that's going to, we're going to just throw a little glue on that in a little while and like I said, everything on the interior is going to be pappy red. Time to change eyeballs. Okay, now I'm going to be laying out my the roof hole for the for the blower hat. Yeah, I'm sorry, my big old noggin's right there in the way, but when you're doing this kind of stuff, you you have to, you don't really worry about the camera. You you're doing what you have to do. Because this stuff needs to be spot on. There we go. There's a there's a hard edge right there. And I need to go to the inside of that that edge. So I that's gonna tell me how much I need to shave off the sides and the top and the bottom. So once once I get it set, I will use the the end right there. And I will put a mark. Then I'll go up to the top and put a mark. And then I'll take my ruler and line up the two, the two marks. And that will tell me, that will show me how much I need to trim off of there so it will fit flush on the inside. Now for the curves, you just you just follow the curve and put a tick, follow the curve, put a tick, and then just then just trace it the best you can. Some of these, if they're not, if it doesn't have a ton to uh, cut away, you can you can just sand it down to the line. But now my sides, I had to actually cut. But those curved top and bottom pieces, I was able to sand those down. Then I've got my holes drilled. Now I'm taping it up. I'm fixing to. I'll hit it with some pink primer. And then I'll come back with the Pappy Red. You probably won't see it in this video because I'm trying to keep it. Uh, I'm trying to keep it under 30 minutes.
the next video will be on interior stuff uh, well upholstery so you'll probably see the rest of rest of this video in the upholstery segment there I'm using two millimeter tape and six millimeter tape I will work that two millimeter in first and then put the six farther out as we go and that concludes this video